My name is Karen Chow. I was 46 years old when I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. It was stage two, but the aggression factor was third level, so it was very aggressive. The surgery that I underwent was a lumpectomy and a sentinel node biopsy, uh, but it was discovered that the margins were not clear, so I had to go in for a second um, excision. And then I went through uh, four rounds of AC chemotherapy, so adromycin, uh, cyclophosphamide, and then five weeks of uh, radiation, which included a, um, a boost, uh, booster um, treatment to the, uh, the tum tumor site. You know, a lot of people use the terminology roller coaster. So there is a, a roller coaster of emotion, emotions and physical pain and a whole lot of different things that you go through. And, and you know, other times I think of it as a kaleidoscope because I almost felt a bit frantic uh, during those first few days and first few weeks afterwards because you, you, know, you think, okay, I do have cancer, so what does this mean? And then the fear shows up and then you say, okay, no, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. And then you wake up in the middle of the night and you say to yourself, is it going to be okay? You know, so you, you have this sort of mixed reaction that's just sort of all over the place. And I, I just kind of wanted to believe, and I, I did believe, that I would come out um, at the end of the journey at the other end um, just fine. There would be a lot of bad stuff to go through, right, to get there, but I sort of started to build on that kind of um, confidence and, and strength, if you will, to just sort of set the course uh, for the next little while. There is an adjustment that needs to happen um, in terms of just being patient around even things like gathering information. Because one of the things that is so bothersome when you're first diagnosed is you want all the answers, right? Your fear is greatest about the unknown. And so the more you can gather information and knowledge, I believe helps you to harness a little control over the situation because that's what you're feeling is totally out of control when somebody says you have cancer. Often when you hear those words, you don't hear anything more after that until you, you're able to sort of, okay, sort of plant your feet and say, I, I'm now open to trying to understand what does this really mean? So I find that what I found very frustrating through in the beginning weeks was that I would ask the questions, okay, so what is my diagnosis? What is my prognosis? Many questions I would ask, you get answers, but those answers often would open the door to five other questions. So I try to advise people that it's, it, you don't get all the answers right in one shot, but you need to continue to, answer, to ask the questions. One of the really, the hard things for me, the hardest thing probably emotionally, was having to tell um, family members. Uh, that um, I had cancer, uh, even though I, I knew it would be fine. It was, I spent a lot of time reassuring people that I would be fine. And, um, and part of the reason why it was a bit challenging was because I had lost my younger sister to um, lung cancer previously. And so, um, you know, a family had already, the family had already lost one child, if you will, one member of the family. So it was really hard to tell my parents that I had cancer, but it was also really hard to tell my sister's girls. Uh, that I had cancer. So that was probably one of the hardest things I had to go through, believe it or not. You know intellectually that you're going to lose your hair, but when it actually starts to fall out, it's absolutely devastating. You know, like as women in our society, we define ourselves by certain things, and part of it is, I mean, when you're having a bad day, it's a bad hair day, right? So I was having a lot of bad hair days through, through chemo. I think the worst part of it was <clears throat> standing in the shower and letting the water, the shower water fall all, all over me, but I couldn't feel the water. I was just feeling my hair falling all over my body. So that was one of the worst sensations through that whole period. So I, di I did lose my hair. It is a very visual reminder that there is definitely something wrong uh, going on with your body. But the other part of it was when the, the days that I had a little more energy, I would say, well, okay, I'm sort of partway through this process now. So pretty soon at some point, this hair is gonna start to grow back. And uh, I actually, see, I have Chinese hair, right? Dead straight. So the first hair growth actually had a little bit of curl. It was pretty cool. Because ever since I was a little girl, I wanted curly hair. <laughs> Unfortunately, first haircut. 
um, and it was a great haircut. Uh, it was just good to have your haircut. Um, all the growth was gone. I treated this whole period of my life as a bit of a project and said, okay, where is it that I need to get to? When do I want to get there? And what are the milestones along the way that I can actually um, celebrate and or goals that I can establish to, to get me there? So it was really important for me to um, set those goals and try to reach them. I'll tell you one story and some people might not find it funny, but we can laugh about it now. But after my first chemo, I felt good. I actually felt great. So I went out for a power walk and we're talking about, this is in January, right? It's, it's cold, it's winter, I'm out there power walking, feeling great. So for the three weeks in between my chemos, I went power walking almost every day, feeling great get there and they do blood work before you go in for chemo and you have a consult before you actually go into the lab so the during the consult the oncology nurse said she said what have you been doing your white cell count is way below the threshold like it's in the basement and uh, we don't think we can give you chemo today well I almost <laughs> lost it because she was messing with my goal I had to have chemo that day I had set myself up I knew emotionally mentally intellectually I was set for it, I was ready for it. And if I didn't get chemo that day, that was really going to mess and mess up my plan because then that meant I wasn't going, you know, to finish my treatment until uh, three weeks later after I had set my goal. So I am, um, anyways, I negotiated, so I got my chemo that day. But and the whole thing about setting goals, that's what I would say was very important for me. And um, unbelievable support from uh, family and friends. So I think that being surrounded by people through that was incredible. My husband was incredible. Um, he was just an amazing support. So that was uh, for me very, very important um, how, to, how to get through this whole journey. For me, initially, um, I was obsessive about doing my self-exams daily. When I told my oncologist, he said, you don't have to do it daily. You know, it's fine if you just do it like once a month. So I've, um, it's been almost five years now and I'm just now progressing to <laughs> once a month self exams. But it's, uh, it's funny how, yes, the fear is always there, but it does sort of dissipate, you know, over time. But then it, it you, you know, go into a new day and you happen to maybe lift your luggage the wrong way and you're feeling a, a pain in the chest wall and you think, what is that? Well, in fact, it's just like you strain the muscle and it's not anything more serious, but that fear doesn't ever really go away. It is a journey and with any journey, there is a beginning and there is an end and there's lots of stuff in between. Uh, but it does get better, you know. There are some dark days during chemotherapy, but if you keep in perspective what your goal line is to uh, reach the end of the treatment, you will get there. And um, you know, they talk about the light at the end of the tunnel. It does get pretty bright at the end, so um, it's people to have faith that they will get through it and it will be okay.